uh, I'm going to present the next case. He's a 64 years old male. His known diseases are depression and dyslipidemia, and his medication is alprazolam, anaphranil, semvacetine, dutasteride, and temzolozine. His complaints are LUTs with voiding symptoms, and he had two episodes of urinary retention in the past. Because he had IPSA, he did three negative biopsies. His orophthalmometry had key max 7.9 milliliters per second. His digital exam, it's normal, just a prostate that is enlarged. And his ultrasound has uh, 120 cc of prostate. He's going to be submitted to a laparoscopic million at denomectomy by Professor Francesco Porpidia. Okay, I am uh, very happy to be here because uh, now I'd like to show a milling technique for adenomectomy for a large adenoma and uh, as you know there is a competition a big competition about this technique in the last years because uh, so there are different uh, techniques that uh, we can offer the, our patients about uh, the possibility to treat a big adenoma like like uh, and, uh, endoscopy with uh, all mule laser, but I think that you can use also a laparoscopic approach, uh, especially when the adenoma are very, very large. So uh, they offer me today the possibility to show the milling technique that uh, I use uh, in, uh, uh, with the laparoscopic approach. And uh, as you know, many also, the robotic device could be used for that. And uh, I developed this technique in, in the last year. Obviously, the approach that I use is uh, an uh, extraperitoneal approach, as you can see, that I developed in the years uh, for a radical prostatectomy. So I performed the first incision, the first one uh, at the level uh, below the uh, umbilicus, and now I try to dissect. I try to dissect the retroperitoneal space with the balloon, and uh, obviously, after a finger guidance, I introduce my choker, and I am uh, dissecting the space. This uh, this one is. Uh, very clear, the technique that I use is the same that uh, usually we use, uh, on the, I used in the past for a radical prostatectomy. This is uh, the balloon, it's uh, like a bin. This is uh, a ovoidal balloon. It's a little bit different uh, in comparison to the balloon that I use for a, a retroperitoneoscopic approach, as you can see, and so, I create the, the I uh, created the space, uh, and now I introduce under finger guidance the chokers. The first choker that I introduce is uh, the 12 milliliter, 12 millimeter chokers, under finger guidance at this level, and uh, so the disposition of the choker will be at the end. Uh, I found this position and uh, like a radical prostatectomy. So there is no difference uh, in terms of a choker disposition uh, between uh, milling and uh, between uh, and, uh, and the radical prostatectomy. So this is the same technique in terms of a choker disposition. And uh, yes, there are okay. obviously, this is uh, uh, the extra peritoneal approach, as you can see. This is the retropubic space, as is uh, similar, completely similar to the access that we do for radical prostatectomy. And uh, I try to gain this space uh, in, uh, in order to uh, visualize the, uh, the pubis at this level. And now, okay. Okay, okay, it's clear now. Okay, and the right. More, can you put here? Okay, here. Okay. Sorry, sorry, okay. 
I need now to dissect the space here in order to put the, the choker for the second surgeon. And so this could be here. Choker, please. Okay. In the left side, thanks to the balloon, it has been possible to have a, a perfect dissection. And so I introduce now the choker again. And so. Okay, the trocar are well uh, put in a fashion, a fashion uh, disposition. So can uh, find this position. So can you give me this one, the step? Thank you. Another, please. Here. Okay. I clean, as you can see, the, the fascia, the pelvic fascia, and uh, I can, uh, I try to remove. Can you enlarge the images, please? Coagulation. Okay. Down, up, 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 up. Okay, okay. Coagulation, please. Oh. Okay. Right. Bipolar. Okay. 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 Not one. Okay. There is, there is someone, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Coagulation. Okay. Okay. Caesar. Bleeding so as you and monopolar. Okay. Monopolar? Okay. Step by step slowly. As you can see the incision is performed. Coagulation. Okay. Okay again. Okay again. Okay. Okay. On the right side. Coagulation. Coagulation. Okay. 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 Bipolar, please. Okay. Yes. No. Okay. Can, can you hear me, Francesco? This is Peter. Okay. I'm hearing you. Okay. So I just Take. wonder. So when when I do this operation, I normally start by putting a suture through the dors around Population. the dorsal venous, venous complex. Do you don't do anything like that? So just well, I don't. Uh, can you repeat, Peter? <laughs> sorry, <laughs> so but sorry. because I am. Uh, Say, can you repeat? Yes. So when when I do this operation, I normally start by putting a suture around the dorsal venous complex. But you, I see that you don't do that. Do you? Yes. Coagulation. Yes, usually in the past uh, I perform a suture at this level, but I uh, didn't record any advantages, okay, in terms of bleeding. So I think that the best technique is, okay, to coagulate step by step, slowly, okay? And it's important to have a bipolar that is very efficacy, okay, okay, because uh, and so I think that the step is very, very important to perform. Okay, a coagulation. Okay. Okay. Okay, step by step here. Okay. 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 Okay, coagulation, please. Monopolar. Okay. 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 As you can see, I can coagulate here now. Okay. And as you can see, this is the. Okay. 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 Mono. 
Oh, good, very well. Okay. 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 Stop. Okay. Okay, continue. Okay, mono. Stop. Okay. 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 Can you clean, please? Okay. As you can see, I, I try to gain step by step the adenoma slowly, okay? Because we have a different uh, dissection, plane dissection, and so I, I try to find the best one, okay? Okay. I finish to perform my dissection when I look at the bottom. Okay of uh, the prostate of the adenoma, okay? Okay. 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 Perfect. And that is perf perfectly white, as you can see. Can you look at better? Can you give me the possibility to look better? So this is uh, the dissection plane this is clear now? Okay. Is clear for you, Peter? Okay. Okay. Okay, continue. Okay. Mono. Stop. Okay. 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 Can you clean please? Okay. As you can see, I, I try to gain step by step the adenoma slowly, okay? Because we have a different uh, dissection, plane dissection, and so I, I try to find the best one, okay? Okay. I finish to perform my dissection when I look at the bottom. Okay of uh, the prostate of the adenoma, okay? Okay. 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 Perfect. And that is perf perfectly white, as you can see. Can you look at better? Can you give me the possibility to look better? So this is uh, the dissection plane this is clear now, okay. Is clear for you, Peter? Okay. Okay, in the right side. Can you rise a little bit the CO2 of 14? Is possible to have 14? Okay. Look. No. no. 
Okay. 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 Thank you. Can you? Okay. Coagulation, please. Okay. 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 Here. Okay. 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 Perfect. Can you clean the camera, please? Camera. I and have uh, one I think, uh, sorry, that this step is uh, the, uh, the most important step because otherwise, if uh, don't identify very well the, the plane, so the risk to have a bleeding during the, the dissection is very high. So this is very important to identify the plane. And obviously, it's, uh, moreover, it's very important to perform a coagulation of the vessels, of the capsular vessels that uh, I am uh, doing in this phase. Okay. If you would like some question, I am here for you. Yes. Well, uh, which uh, the advantage of uh, this technique uh, compared uh, with the classic uh, milling? Well, in uh, the difference, the, I think that there is no difference in comparison the, cla the, the standard milling. So this is a typical uh, approach. I duplicate it. It's the same. The only difference that uh, I don't use obviously the spatial divaricator because as you know, there was a spatial divaricator during the, in the open surgery, as you know. And uh, in this case, I, my dissection is performed exactly as you can see with my instrument. That's okay, the, the dissection uh, begin laterally if I'd like like in this way, it's a perfect, can you look at better? It's a perfect enucleation, okay, step by step. And uh, so the, it's very important to perform an enucleation. Perhaps uh, during the dissection phase, some vessel can be, some bleeding could, can be visualized. And so it's important to electrocoagulate like this, okay. So at this point, I go in the left, uh, in the right side, and so I dissect also here, it's clear. Okay, and can you go back with the lens? Okay, I dissect uh, step by step, clearly, and I join up to the urethra and I look the urethra and I perform an incision at the level of the urethra. Is clear? It's I, clear am okay. I am dissecting the adenoma anteriorly. Exactly what we do with the finger in the open surgery, but I am doing this one with uh, the the instrument with, uh, in this case, with bipolar, but otherwise, uh, usually, I use the, the Joan uh, forceps. Can you give me a Joan, please? Coagulation, please. Coag Coag okay, and now, thanks to the two grasp, I dissect slowly, step by step, the adenoma, okay? Okay. Okay, it's clear there is the urethra at the end. Okay. And the right side. Okay. Can you look at look at here, here, and the saw? 
I am dissecting step by step the adenoma. Back, back, okay, back, okay. Okay, okay. Francesco, yes. If you have a median lobe, do you change the technique? No, no, no. <laughs> so, I think that dissection must be with a retrograde way, as you can see, because at the end I perform an incision of the the bladder neck. It's clear. Now, identify the urethra. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Okay. Obviously, the catheter must be in uh, position in the urethra in the, the in the bladder, and I dissect and I perform a, a perfect enucleation now posteriorly. Can you can you give me the possibility to look here? Look, look here, look here, look here. Okay, okay, in the right. Okay. Francisco. Yes. How many days you leave the catheter in the, the bladder? The catheter, uh, I remove it after uh, three days, usually, because uh, as uh, I will uh, show you, I, I perform a suture, obviously. Okay, now the dissection is uh, perfectly performed, it's clear, uh, posteriorly and uh, uh, laterally, and I try to dissect now, by polar please. And uh, so usually I remove the catheter after three days. The advantages of this technique is uh, the following, that uh, for a big adenoma, for a large adenoma, obviously is good. Uh, I think it's better, in my opinion, in terms of especially irritative symptoms, to perform this uh, kind of enucleation in comparison uh, the other technique, uh, so obviously I have not experience with Olmium laser, but uh, uh, the energy that we use is uh, obviously confined only at the uh, bipolar uh, energy. So uh, I think that uh, you reduce significantly the energy at the level of the capsula, and so I think that we have advantages in terms of irritative symptoms, and this is uh, one uh, uh, topic that we need to take in consideration. Okay, this is the bladder neck, clear. Okay, this is the balloon, okay, inside. Now I perform the incision here. Can you give me scissor, please? And so I remove the adenoma. And so the advantage is, is in my opinion, the fact that uh, we don't use uh, energy, and uh, see this is uh, uh, for the patients a big advantage because they have not coagulation freeze, uh, they are not uh, irritative symptoms, and uh, so the patients have a fast, a quick recovery, not only in terms of quality of, in terms of uh, 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 hospitalization, but also in terms of quality of life, because the quality of the emission is very, very high. Congratulations, please. Okay. And uh, so it's, uh, it's very important for the patient, obviously, to have a, uh, a quick recovery also under this point of view. So I continue my enucleation. So can you remove the, the catheter, please? So if the, we have, if we have the, uh, the, the medium lobe, so you, you can perform the incision uh, here at the level of the mucosa, you can perform the enucleation of the medium lobe without, without difficulties, like we do during radical prostatectomy. You can remove a little bit, okay. 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 Now so you there is the a, a like, okay, you can see, okay, you can see there is a, a smaller, uh, a small medium lobe. Okay, it's clear. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay, coagulation. 
Okay. 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 So it's important, obviously, to uh, find very well the the uh, the, the plane between capsula and this is one, is this one and the adenoma. At uh, the beginning of uh, my experience, obviously, the risk is to perform an incision here. It's an incision here, and sometimes, uh, obviously, if uh, you don't find the uh, you perform an incision here uh, to have a big risk to have a bleeding in the postoperative stage. So it's very important to dissect and to find the the dissection plane between the adenoma and the capsula. Okay, it's very very important. This, this is the uh, most important point that I'd like to emphasize in order to prevent bleeding. Okay, this is uh, the adenoma. Okay. 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 Can you clean here, please? Here. Okay. Here. This patient performed the three biopsy in the past for a PSA more than four and uh, for nanograms milliliters. And uh, so this is the reason why I have a, a little bit of difficulty, I think, to enucleate the adenoma here. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay, I perform the nucleation, the two lobes are clear, and so this is the prostatic loggia, huh? okay, the urethra, can you put the catheter inside please, the catheter please, okay, Foley catheter, okay, Foley catheter, okay, this is the Vero Montano, and this is the prostatic loggia, and this is the bladder neck. And now I remove, I put in the bag the adenoma and I perform a tri typical trigonizations. As you can see, the bleeding is very low and so the capsula is perfect. Obviously there is a little bit of irregularity that this could be correlated with the previous biopsy that has been done in these patients. Okay. And the bag please. So this uh, typical adenoma, multinodular adenoma, okay. I don't know if this is the weight, but it uh, could be about uh, 78 uh, grams. So I think that uh, the indication sh should be about uh, from 100 grams up to 200, 200, uh, eight grams because I perform adenomectomy only for very, very large adenoma. Okay, now I try to remove uh, some nodes that are here, okay, in order to perfectioning the, can you me scissor please? In order to perfectioning my enucleation and after I, I try, I have difficulties to enter with this one. Okay, okay, scissor again. Coagula, please, scissor, please, again. Okay, sorry for that. Wait, monopolar, please. Okay. Again, again, okay, okay. Okay. 
Can you show me now the bladder neck? It should be here. Okay. It's here. Okay. Can you give me Jean, please? Jean? Say one moment. Okay. Okay, thank you. This is Adenova again. Okay, bladder neck should be here. Okay. Can you give me another John? Okay. It's here. Okay. It's this one. Okay. Perfect. Okay. This is the bladder neck. As you can see, it's a little bit closed. I try to to remove. Okay. Okay. This uh, small adenoma that is here. I perform an incision here, and after I begin with a, a nucleation. Can you clean the lens, please? Okay. So, okay. Coagulation, please. Okay. Can you coagulate? Okay. Okay. It's not this one. Uh, okay. Okay. Coagulation, please. Okay. Okay. Coagulation, please. Okay. 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 You can see now. I remove a little bit of uh, bladder neck because it's important for the reorganization, obviously. Okay. You can see now the meatus of. Uh, okay, the meatus is not important to look at because usually they are behind. Okay. Coagula. Okay. Coagulation, please. Okay. Okay. This is adenoma. Okay. Okay. Clean. Oh. Okay. Okay. Down. Another small adenoma here. Okay. Very small. Okay. Okay. Stop. Here. Okay. So it's the bladder neck, and now I begin the suture. From here, from 5 o'clock up to 7 o'clock, I perform a running suture. Okay, and uh, give me, please. In order to obtain the typical trigonization, okay? So it's important to perform a trigonization because thanks to the trigonization, not this one, but the five eight. Not this, not this. Okay. Okay. I begin now the suture here. And no. Okay. Here. Yeah. 
Okay. Can you show me better one? Okay. Oh. Look at, show me. Okay, this is the mucosa. Okay. Okay, down. Okay. 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 This is the mucosa again, blood their neck, the posterior lip of blood their neck, and so. I continue my suture up to seven o'clock. This uh, suture has uh, an important uh, rule in terms of uh, control of, of hemostasis because uh, the bleeding that we can record, uh, if we respect the capsule, usually is uh, from uh, five or seven o'clock at the level of uh, flux artery and the so is important, and from the bladder neck. Okay, this is the bladder neck again, okay. Okay, can you clean here? Sorry. Okay. Okay, I think that this could, could be a small adenoma. Okay, perhaps. Okay, can you give me the forceps, please? Scissor, please, again. Clean, clean well. Okay, here. I say multinodular adenoma. Okay. Can you give me the possibility to look at well? Okay. Uh, look very well here. That is adenoma oh. also? Yes, I think that this is uh, a small adenoma, and I try to remove it in order to have a, a perfect suture, obviously. Okay. Okay. Oh. Oh. Sorry. Sorry. 
Okay. Francisco. Okay. Francisco. Yes, tell me. In terms of bleeding, you think uh, th uh, there is no no more bleeding than uh, the standard technique? Standard technique. Uh, what means standard technique? Uh, open, Endoscopic. Open. Yes. So if uh, you have a canal, give me a forceps. So if you have a, a bleeding, uh, so. I think that you need to to control the bleeding. Can you give me another uh, stitch, please, to control the the bleeding, obviously. <coughs> and uh, so, if uh, in the post-operative state there is a bleeding, for example, I think that is uh, a good idea to perform endoscopic approach before uh, to uh, in, in any case, because I think in our experience we we control the bleeding and the post-operative stay in a one or two cases with uh, endoscopic approach, okay? okay? So, okay. So I think uh, in this phase it's important obviously to check that you control the bleeding with the stitch or with the bipolar Otherwise, the endoscopic approach is very important only if uh, there is a bleeding in the post-operative stay. It's the first step that we advise in case of bleeding, okay? <coughs> Show me. Okay. 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 Hello, going to Okay. Okay. Hmm? Perfect. Okay, a little bit. And after you can give me Flossil, please. Coagulation, please. Coagula. Bipolar. Okay. Give me bipolar, please. Bipolar. Okay, again. Okay. Again. Okay. Okay, bipolar here, bipolar. Okay. Okay. Oh. Can you introduce the, can you give me a, a flocid? So as you can see, I perform the trigonization. I think that the hemostasis is good. I can give, uh, if I'd like a stitch uh, here, otherwise I can, uh, perform now, I can perfectioning the hemostasis thanks to the flocil inside the, the loggia and after I can, uh, I can uh, obviously introduce the catheter, okay? So the zygonization has been completed here and then I finish with the suture of the capsule in this way. Can we clean the camera again? Okay. Francisco. Yeah, tell me. One question for you. Uh, and uh, about the bladder uh, calculus. What do you do? Uh, if you have the bladder stones. Yes. Yes, in case of bladder stones, it's, uh, I treat some patients also with the bladder stones. Also, this could be a limitation because if the stones usually are big, it's not a problem because uh, the stones usually, they, I push here the, the, the um, uh, no, again, the bladder, and so the stones, they arrive usually at the level of the bladder neck, so I can remove it 
e easily. And uh, uh, sometimes, obviously, see if the stones are uh, if the stones are more than uh, uh, multiple stones, sm uh, coagulation, please, is uh, m uh, more than uh, one, so three or four stones. Sometimes, uh, potentially, there is the risk to leave the stones inside the bladder. Uh, but if the stones is uh, one, a it is big. So I think uh, you can remove uh, the stones uh, without the difficulties. Sometimes could be also useful to perform an incision larger to prolong the incision here. But usually if I push the bladder in this way, okay, okay. so the stones usually appear at the level of the bladder neck. Okay, can you give me the catheter, please? Can you introduce the catheter, please? Okay, push in. Okay. Okay. Catheter, please. Introduce the catheter. As you can see, the catheter is in the bladder now. Okay. No. Can you close the catheter with the cocker? And now I close the bladder. Okay. The capsule. Give me the same suture. We lock like before. Okay. 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 Francisco? Yeah. And you leave uh, some drain? Yes, I leave uh, one drain, a small drain, obviously. Aspirative? Not, not for bleeding, but only for check uh, eventually. Urine leak, not for bleeding, because uh, as you can see at the end, there is not bleeding uh, at the level of the retropubic space. Okay? Okay. And uh, uh, well, many, we remove. Yes. They drain after two days, two not days? more, okay. yes. And uh, the catheter after three days. Okay. <coughs> Obviously, it's important you have a watertight suture. And do stay in the hospital? Uh, how many days? Three days or so? I don't, uh, can you repeat, please? Because there is a noise in the... How the many days do you stay in the hospital? Three, day, uh, three days, obviously. Uh, the day of when you remove the catheter in the morning, the day after, uh, or in the afternoon, the patient is discharged. Charge, yes. And so usually stay not more than uh, three days. Obviously, it depends of uh, there is bleeding or not. There is bleeding uh, or not. There is noise in the operative room. Okay, thank you so much. And... Uh, Depends of this, but usually our post-operative stays about uh, three days. Okay. So I think that uh, in um, comparison uh, with uh, uh, Olmion laser, because in our department we do also uh, Olmion laser, and uh, the difference is that uh, our adenoma, the adenoma that we remove, the, this technique is. Uh, larger than uh, the uh, adenoma that we treat with the Olmium laser. And this is an, another point in favor of, uh, uh, of milling. And the uh, advantages that we have are in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, symptoms uh, in the post-operative stay. So it means that uh, we de usually we don't record the irritative symptoms. The patients are satisfied 
if uh, we ask them uh, the, uh, in terms of quality of life, uh, in terms of uh, irritative symptoms, they are very satisfied because they don't record irritative symptoms. At least the patients have before uh, uh, overactivity of the bladder. And uh, usually, in terms of uh, uh, abstraction symptoms, obviously the results are excellent from the first day. And uh, we record that uh, in terms of uh, quality of flow, the flow improve more like in the open surgery, so that, as you know, is uh, up to now the gold standard for uh, large adenoma. There is no, there are no difference. As you can see, the technique is uh, uh, is very similar. Is uh, of uh, milling, milling that had been described many many years ago, and uh, so uh, the, there are no reasons to to have obviously uh, res uh, different results in terms of. Uh, uh, abstractions in terms of irritative symptoms. Obviously, the advant advantages are represented by the fact that the patients have uh, obviously more uh, quickly recovery and uh, in comparison to open surgery, we show already in the past in one paper that has been published in the Journal of Urology many years ago, we show that there is a difference in terms of blood loss during the the operative step, obviously not in uh, the post-operative stay, because as you can see, we can we can control very well the the bleeding. Can you give me bipolar, please, again? So okay. you think uh, this is the best uh, outcomes? Yes. Uh, coagulation, please. So in terms of. Uh, Transfusion rate, we, re we record only uh, about 2% of transfusion rate coagulation. And uh, we have uh, an average of bleeding about uh, 100, 200 milliliters. I don't know how many, uh, what is the blood loss of during this operation. Can you give me the blood loss, please? The blood loss. Can you cut? Cut, please. Okay. Cutting. Cecil. Okay. Thank you. What? Uh, well, 200 cc has been recorded. I uh, have been estimated. 200 cc. Uh, needle holder, please. Department like uh, the mine department, in uh, which we have the possibility to use the laparoscopic approach, I, I'd like to offer different options at the patients, and this could be considered like an option for uh, the patients, okay? Okay. And uh, obviously I am not able to perform a uh, onion laser, so I think that uh, in this case, if the patients have uh, a large adenoma, obviously I offer this uh, solution and this technique that uh, usually is not considered in the guideline of uh, EAU. Now uh, it has been accepted like option. In the past uh, was not considered. But uh, I think that on the b because uh, only few surgeons use this technique because there are only few experience. Uh, because uh, it's evident that there is uh, uh, a big competition in terms of uh, technique for management of BPH, but I'd like also say this, that this is not a easy technique, obviously. There is a learning curve, and in terms of learning curve, I think that we need at least, in my experience, 40, 45 uh, adenomectomy before to offer go good results in terms of uh, less invasiveness at the patients, okay? So, obviously, I, I joined this, uh, I arrived to offer this technique after that I matured a good experience for radical prostatectomy. And so, 
in, consider in consideration of this. For me, has been not a problem to offer two paths from radical prostatectomy to uh, a simple prostatectomy. Okay. Uh, when I begin my experience with this technique, obviously it uh, was a little bit more difficult because uh, the reconization was uh, more difficult because uh, we have not the block. Now, thanks to this kind of suture, we can uh, reduce the operative time. Uh, we can uh, perform uh, a uh, trigonization more precise than in the past. Okay, I would like uh, to congratulate, uh, congratulate to you for uh, this uh, good job and good surgery. Okay, now I pass the last stitch and after I stop, I know the suture with uh, the previous one. Francisco, tell me. And uh, for the learn of the um, radical prostatectomy, you think uh, this is the good uh, way for for this? So, I think that the laparoscopy is died for radical prostatectomy. As you know, we <laughs> we show in the past the randomized studies we published in the European Urology the randomized study in which we show that there is a, a difference in terms not of blood loss, but in terms of uh, functional results. And now we are analyzing the results of this series of patients after five years, and we think that in the next day we send, we send these uh, results, uh, this paper at the European Urology, and uh, we show after a six year, five years of follow up at minimum, uh, that the, the results are better for a radical prostatectomy with a robotic approach. And in terms of uh, quality of uh, functional results, the functional results, can you give me bipolar please again? And the functional results uh, with uh, 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 multivariate analysis, coagulation with uh, statistic analysis is clearly in favor of uh, robotic uh, surgery than in a laparoscopic surgery. And uh, so we think that he, can you inflate the balloon, please? And uh, balloon, please. And uh, we show also, I anticipate the results now, and coagulation, and uh, we show that uh, in terms of uh, uh, functional results, uh, the performance of uh, robotic surgery is, uh, is better than uh, laparoscopy, at least for five, six uh, times better at uh, each point that in which we evaluate the continence and uh, again, 40, uh, uh, each point it means uh, at one year, two years, three years, uh, and uh, obviously four or five years. So it means that the robotic surgery is the, be uh, is the best one for the best technique for I inflate the balloon, as you can see in the, in the bladder. And so uh, uh, I think that the robotic uh, surgery is the best one. Is in, the, in the future, it will become the standard for a uh, stop we finished. Uh, for a radical prostatectomy, and uh, uh, I'm convinced that la laparoscopy can be confined for uh, some procedures, like uh, some cases of uh, like a partial nephrectomy, pyeloplastic, and otherwise, and other technique. Can, you, can I clean, please? And uh, this is the future, in my, in my opinion. And obviously, when uh, it's possible, I, I try to use the, okay, I inflate the bladder now, the bladder is okay, perfect. 
and uh, now we can start with uh, uh, continuous lavage. Okay. 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 Thank, you? thank okay. you. It's okay. Thank you for your, for you. Yes, it's okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for your attention. Okay.